Now we come to the naval battles of the War of 1812. The largest and most important naval battle. Where was it fought? Margaret? Lake Erie. Correct. Who was the commander who won this important battle? Finney? We did. <laughs> I ask you for the name of the commander who won the battle. Well, we're waiting. Uh, it's coming, just a second. Jamie, can you answer this question? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, it was... Oliver Hazard. Ah, oh, then you're right. Perry. Oliver Hazard Perry. That is correct. And Finney, you stay after school and study your history. You could have whispered it to me, but you got to show off. Arithmetic next. Um, you seventh and eighth graders, exchange papers. Give me that paper. Finney. Oh, you give it to me. Oh, I can't see. Yeah. Give me the paper. Finney in the middle of the classroom. Did you? Yes, sir. He didn't even give me a chance to defend myself. Is that true? Yeah, I guess so. Well, would you mind telling us why? I'm waiting, Jamie. It was just something between Finney and me. I see. Finney, can you shed any light on this matter? Well, it was just like he said. Who hit first? He did. Is that true? Yes, sir. Well, I'll ask you once more. Why? Now, Jimmy, there's no excuse for fighting in a classroom. You've embarrassed us all. Mac, I apologize for Jamie's actions. And Jamie will apologize as well. Jamie. I can't. I think you better go to your room. I don't understand what's got into that boy. When he's wrong, he usually admits it. Finney! Are you holding something back? No, Pa. If I find out you are, I'm gonna wail the tar out of you. But, Pa, he, he hit me first. <laughs> oh, Ben, I don't mind telling you, I, I'm a little embarrassed myself. My boy got 10 pounds on yours. Look at him, he's got two black eyes and... Well, Jamie don't look like he's hardly got a scratch. But, Pa, he got the drop on me. Dog, oh, get on out of here, alibi. I... I'm sorry, Ben. I... I just had to find out what's going on. Don't worry, I intend to find out for myself. Hey, what happened to you, Finney? Did you walk into the door, too? Nah, Jamie hit me. Oh, oh yeah? Jamie did all that? Will you stop embarrassing me? Jamie did pretty good. Yeah, you really whopped it on him, huh? <laughs> <You> sure did. <laughs> you wouldn't eat? 
He say, no thanks. Jamie not eat something pretty wrong. Something must be pretty wrong. You know, usually when he has problems, he discusses them with us. And no use to waste good stew. Well, if he won't eat, he won't eat. Don't worry about it. All right. How sing not worry about Jamie? Maybe you ought to go upstairs and try talking to him again, huh? Wouldn't say anything before. No reason to think he'd say anything now. I sure wish I knew what that fight was about. Well, whatever it was, must have been pretty important to get him acting like this. Well, there's one way to find out what that fight was about. Talk to an eyewitness. Let me see Miss Griggs. You want us to go along with you? No. No, you just finish it now. There's no jewel. There was another eyewitness to that fight. Finn McLean. Right. Won't you and me and go, go have a talk with him? I'm with him. Oh, really? He hasn't eaten anything. He hasn't eaten Second call for dinner. Fine kettle of stew. No, thanks. You're only a boy. You need food to grow on. <laughs> Too much of me already. The bigger I get, the more trouble I get into. You're not as bad as you think. <sighs> no, I know. I'm worse. Maybe so things get better when you're full grown. Eat stew. You be a big man before you know it. No thanks. Teaching eight grades, I find it takes a little night work to stay ahead of my students. I'm sure it does. Your housekeeper told me that I'd find you here. I... I hope it won't take up too much of your time. I've been expecting you. You want to know what started the fight? Yes. Finney had something of Jamie's and refused to return it. So, uh, Jamie had cause. In the classroom, there's no place to settle an argument that way. I agree. I, uh, usually make myself a pot of tea about this time. Perhaps you'll join me? Thank you. I'd like to. Mr. Cartwright, may I ask a very personal question? Yes, of course. Are you adopting Jamie? Why do you ask that? Excuse me. Uh, this will explain. Jamie Hunter. Jamie Hunter Cartwright. Jamie H. Cartwright. Jamie Cartwright. Finney took it from Jamie's desk. He was going to show it to the other children. That's what started the fight. Well, we know what he was thinking. A very private thought. Jamie didn't want anyone to know until it happens. If it happens. I've given it serious consideration. There are several problems. Jamie is an orphan, isn't he? Yes. But there may be relatives somewhere. He must have a clear idea of where he's from. Everywhere, nowhere. Mrs. Griggs, Jimmy's father was a rainmaker. Traveled to a hundred towns and a dozen states and territories. Can Jamie help? No, he's tried, he's tried. All he can remember is the, the traveling. Now, his father kept a journal of sorts, you know, names, a few addresses, 
Mostly towns, uh, dates of arrival, dates of departure, weather, condition of the roads, things like that. I've written to every sheriff and mayor in every one of those communities. You must have had some answers. Yes, a few. And all of them from people who knew no more about Jamie and his father than we did. That they came, stayed a few days, moved on. No wonder your home means so much to Jamie. It's the only security he's ever had. You know, his father gave him very valuable inner security. A lot of love. We've been able to give him some roots as well. Mr. Cartwright, what are you waiting for? Not a thing. Not a blessed thing. J.B. Cartwright. He sure it doesn't sound any better to him than it does to me. Good. Yeah, she was getting kind of filthy. Yeah. Is uh, Jamie still up? Well, last time I heard, he was doing his homework. Yeah. See Mrs. Griggs? Yeah. She tell you about the paper? How do you know about the paper? <sighs> we talked to Finney McLean. Yeah, he's a real nice kid, that Finney. Well, we wouldn't know what we know if he hadn't told us what he did. We wouldn't know how Jamie felt, would we? I think we've probably known all along. We've just been a little lax in doing something about it. Yeah, I think the time has come. That is, if you two are in accord. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. That's uh, it's a pretty important decision for us to make. Yeah, I've already lived through one little brother, Paul. I don't know whether I can stand another one or not. <sighs> Decision's unanimous, you know that. Absolutely, 100%. I think we ought to do it right now. Right. I think we better check with the party concerned. No. Jamie, maybe you didn't understand what Paul said. Oh, I understand. Well, we, we thought you'd be as happy about the adoption as we are. Why should I be? You always feel sorry for me, that's all. Now, Jamie, that's not true. We've always felt you were part of our family. We just want to make it legal. No, you don't. It's all because of that dumb old paper in school and that Finney McLean, that's all. You don't really want me around here. Jamie, that just ain't so. They had nothing to do with it. Oh, they didn't? Well, then would you please tell me just why you're bringing it up tonight all of a sudden after all the trouble I got into today? Well, I admit maybe the timing isn't of the best. But believe me, this is no spur-of-the-moment decision. It's something we've been thinking and wanting for some time. Look, Mr. Cartwright, you don't have to make any excuses to me. I'm a man and... I well, almost anyways. And I can pull my own weight around this ranch. And any time, any time at all, you don't want me around anymore. All you have to do is say so, all right? Now, if you'll please excuse me, I've got some homework to do. Young man. I'm going to pick you up after school tomorrow. We're going to ride into Virginia City. What for? You just have to ride along to find out. You make sure you wait for me after school. <laughs> contains everything we know about Jamie, except what he's told us, Judge. Well, uh, not a good deal of health here, Ben. No birth certificate for Jamie. No wedding license for his parents. There's a picture in there. I know, Jamie. I was merely trying to find some reference to your mother's maiden name. Yes, sir. Jamie never really knew her. She died when he was about two. Hmm. Did your father ever mention 
where she came from. What about your grandparents? Did your father ever mention them? No, sir. Do you know anything about any other possible blood relatives? No, sir, not a thing. It's been what, Ben, about six months since you first talked to me about possibly adopting Jamie. Yes. You were going to write to everyone whose name and address appears in these papers, attempting to locate or communicate with any possible blood relatives. Yes, I, I did that. I, I wrote to all of them. Most of the letters were returned undelivered. I wrote back to those who didn't reply. I take it without any success. No. Well, that would certainly seem to fulfill the statutory requirements of this state. Inasmuch as no blood relatives have placed a prior claim, so far as Jamie Hunter is concerned, I would say your legal request for adoption now has complete validity. Thank you. There's still some facts to be determined that you've provided a good home for Jamie, fulfilled his needs as to proper food, clothing, education. I'll draw up the adoption papers. It'll take a few days. Well, that does it, Ben. Thank you, Judge, except for one, one more thing I, uh... Oh? It's a matter of Jamie's consent. Well, there's no requirement in the law for that, Ben. Jamie being a minor, he has no say in the proceedings. I'd still like it a matter of record. Very well. Jamie Hunter, a petition for your adoption has been filed in this court by Benjamin Cartwright. What is your wish? regarding this matter. Well, Jamie, is it your wish to become Benjamin Cartwright's legal son and heir? Uh, yes, sir. That's him, Ben Cartwright. The boy's his son? No, his name's Jamie Hunter, but he lives with the Cartwrights. I've heard a lot about Cartwright. Very distinguished looking man. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your help. More than welcome. I uh, suppose I'd have to change my name to Jamie Cartwright. Yes, legally and for all time, that'll be your name. Of course, I wouldn't be exactly like Cost and Joe. I mean, they'd be in your real sons and all. No, you wouldn't be exactly like them. That's true. I didn't figure I would be. Well, Jamie, they were given to me, Cost and Joe. Given? By their mothers. They said gifts they were, too. I didn't choose them. You're a little different, Jamie. You see, I did choose you, because I wanted you to be my son. It's been some time since I've seen everything so ship-shape around here. Yeah. You seen his room? Mm -hmm. He can shave himself right off the shine of the floor. That is, when he gets old enough. <laughs> you know what Hop Sang heard him say this morning? <laughs> Said he wanted to grow up and be a perfect card. I'm not so sure I wanted to see him try to be a perfect card, right? Well, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Give him another week or two, he'll be just an average, aggravating boy. <laughs> something I can do for you? Would you, by any chance, be Jamie Hunter? Uh, yes, sir, I am. I'm Ferris Callahan. Oh, pleased to meet you. And would you like to see Mr. Cartwright? I would indeed, my boy, and you too. I'm your grandfather. Fighting? Fifteen. Yeah. I thought 15 would be taller. Well, I think he's about the right size for 15. Yeah. Well, he's healthy. 
You do go to school. Uh, yes, sir, I do. He has excellent grades. This is fine brandy, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> well, Jamie, I expect you're surprised to see me. Yes, sir, I am. Well, I've been hunting for you for years. <laughs> Tracing a single swallow would have been easier. Your father was constantly on the move. Yes, sir, he was a rainmaker. He went where he was needed. <laughs> so I have been told. Is uh, this your first trip to Virginia City, sir? Yes, it is. A Pinkerton man traced your father to a town called Cottonwood, North Dakota. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. His luggage was still there, held by an innkeeper for non-payment of lodging. In the luggage was my daughter's wedding license and Jamie's birth certificate. And the sheriff there had a letter from Benjamin Cartwright inquiring as to Hunter's family and relations. Well, that's how you got here. Yeah. Uh, stroke of pure luck. If Hunter hadn't run out on his bills, I might never have found Jamie. He didn't run out on him. He was going to pay him. So he said, at many times and at many places. Ah, uh, he was a charming man. He charmed my daughter. Nevertheless, he was a deadbeat and a charlatan. You have no right to talk about my pa like that. Why, well, I have every right, and your manners leave something to be desired. Mr. Carwright, tell him to leave. Jamie. As soon as the formalities are attended to, we're both leaving. You are going to Boston with me. Jamie. Jamie. Cartwright, he might as well know now. I've already told Judge Taylor. You know of my petition to adopt him? I do. It's your misfortune that my men located him at this time. My wife is dead. I have no other family. I want my grandson now. Mr. Callahan, you saw it for yourself. He doesn't want to leave here. Oh, he's just a young lad. He'll change his mind tomorrow. He doesn't realize this primitive area has none of the advantages that I can give him. The finest schools, the finest society, familiarity with all the social graces. I am a rich man, Mr. Cartwright. The Callahan Clipper ships are known around the world. I appreciate what you've been doing for him, but now that I've located him, it's no longer necessary. Necessary? You've never considered it a necessity. Jamie is part of this family. He's happy here. Are you trying to tell me that you're the only man that has the ability to make him happy? No. But I am wondering why you want him. Is it for Jamie's good or for your own? How dare you have the gall to say something like that to Callahan, me? Callahan, I've listened to every single word you've had to say. Not once have you thought of what Jamie might want. What he wants is what I can make up in the counts. He's only a boy. He's not a boy. He's a young man with his roots deep in Ponderosa soil. This is the life he knows, the life he wants, the life he loves. You're wasting your time and mine, Cartwright. I'm taking him with me. I'll do my damnedest to stop you. You can't win. Jamie's my grandson, blood kin. There's nothing you could do to change that. Just as surprised to see him as you were. You were? It's your fault. You wrote the letters. To clear the way for the adoption, Jamie. Now, look, I, I know you're, you're hurt and you're upset and with reason. You bet I have reason. You were with me at Judge Taylor's. You know what yeah, I said. Yeah, I know what you said. You said you were going to adopt me. And then this stranger comes along and says he's going to take me away. Well, he hasn't taken you well, away yet. Well, he will. No, I'm, I'm going to see Judge Taylor with him tomorrow. You know what the judge said about blood relatives and claims and things like that. I don't know what good it's going to do you to see him now. I don't know either. But I'm going to do everything humanly possible to make sure that you stay here. Hey, you must believe me, son. Don't call me son. I'm nobody's son. And I never will be.
be back for the boy this afternoon. Be he hungry now. Hopson cook him something. Make him feel better. Oh, don't even bother. He won't answer. Still hard to believe. It seems like he's been with us forever. That ah, Bernie Paul, there ought to be something we could do. Yeah, like what? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to Carson City. Judge Taylor can't do anything about it. Maybe the governor, the attorney general, maybe they can help. Hey, we're not going to give Jamie up without a fight. Jamie, have you had a good look at this witness trip? This isn't Joe's name. That's right. They made this swing with you, too? Yes, they have. On various occasions. I'll bet they have. Why don't you... Put your name there. It's a long trip to Carson City. You get hungry. This for you and your grandpa. 
No, thanks, officer. But, Jamie, it's a long ride. You get hungry. Look, we don't want it. Please, Mr. Callahan, can we go now? You're not very talkative, lad. Got nothing to say. Aren't you curious about where you're going, what you do, where you live? No. Well, once you get to Boston, you will be. Hey. broken. Yeah. That's broken, all right. There's no way you can move from here. Yeah, we got to. We got to some way, Jamie. Jamie! Jamie! Come back! Jamie! Come back here! Come here. I honor you. Come back. Come back. Hello. Hello. Anybody up there? Hello. Hello. Clothes? Sure, you're the one who needs them. <laughs> Here, put this under your head. It's better than laying on the rocks. I right, thank you. <laughs> there wasn't a blanket in the full box in the blackboard, so this is what I have to do for now. Until I get a fire going. On the blackboard. Yeah, the team ran themselves out. I got them picketed and grazing in a piece of pasture about a half mile up the road. Of course, it's all right. And buckboard needs a few repairs, but I can fix it. <laughs> Fool box. What's that? Well, it's a box under the seat of a livery rig. Holds emergency stuff. This one was empty except a canteen and a hatchet. Irish linen shirt of mine you're destroying. Made to my order in Dublin. Yeah. If it's strong enough, it'll do. Do what? Well, tie these splints on your legs. That's what the boards are for. You mean to say that you're gonna try to set the bones in my leg? No, I didn't say that. I said I'm gonna splint them so they can't move until a doctor can get at you. 
Wouldn't it be more sensible to go for help? And leave you here most of the night, no fire? Well, you could build a fire for me before you go. Sure, and it last you maybe an hour. You think you're cold now? Well, you're not half as cold as you're gonna get. The cold is due to shock. You can't tell me nothing about that. I've set the bones of half a hundred men's legs at sea. Well, then you know this is gonna hurt. Yeah. That's Plainfield. Yes. Yeah, no, no. No, you'll need that. <sighs> You're your mother's son, all right. Stubborn as a rock. Well, you don't exactly bend like a willow, Mr. Callahan. Well, there's a difference in being right and knowing it and cutting off your nose to spite your face. Well, I've still got my nose. Big air of speech. What you haven't got is the lunch the Chinese cook tried to give you. Refusing it was an act of pure churlishness. Whatever that means. It means going hungry, for one thing. Well, now, if you need a picnic basket to eat, you're not much account around here. You can reach the wood. Keep the fire going until I get back. I won't be long. Now, the rabbit, I can understand. You snared it. But the fish? Can you make a snare? No, I cannot. But I know knots and lashes. <laughs> I'd only have to seen it done once to do it. Yeah, well, making it's just the easy part. You also gotta know where to put it. The trout ought to be ready in a couple minutes. It's a lucky thing you had a piece of string and a hook in your pocket. <laughs> I didn't have either. You didn't? How'd you catch them? I tickled them. Huh? Well, it's like making a snare. You gotta know how. I see. And who taught you that? Mr. Cartwright and Haas and Joe. Out here, you gotta know how to take care of yourself. That was a good meal. I thank you. You're welcome. I wonder now how far I'd have to go to find a place to crawl up to the road. I'd say about a half a mile. Half a mile? All those rocks and brushes. Oh, I'd never make it. Well, I'll have you up there in the morning. You carry me up there. Yeah, haven't the strength. Sad thing, though. If I had a decent block, a hundred feet of rope, I could make it. If you had wings, you could fly. Now, I know you don't like me, but that is any excuse for you being impertinent. Well, I'm just saying what my pa used to tell me when I started wishing for something I couldn't have. Oh, I see. <laughs> hey, you know what my father used to say? If wishes were horses, beggars might ride. What did your father have to say about me? Nothing. Elizabeth is only five years older than you are now, and she met your father. She could have had her choice of the most eligible men well, in the whole... she picked my pa. She did, yes. She ran away with him. Three letters in three years. Never a return address. The last letter she wrote, she said she had a son. And then there was one letter from him. Cholera. Mother was dead. You're trying to make it sound bad, but they were happy. Happy? 
You were two years old when she died. How could you possibly know? Because my pa told me. She was as beautiful as a field of mountain flowers. She loved to travel and see new country every day. She never asked or wanted more than my pa had to give her. And they were happy. All right. I agree, agree to that. I admit I did try to stop the marriage, and then I tried to find her to ask her forgiveness. Why, I've been hunting for you for years. Why? Because you're my grandson. Because you're part of my family. You belong in my house, in my home. Where I could give you schooling, social graces, stature. How can you object to that? Why did my mother run away from you? Oh. Oh, uh, sure, I, I don't know. I, I loved her. I gave her everything I could. I suppose I wanted to be like her mother was. She had ideas of her own. I asked her to come home. You wanted her to leave my pa? No, no, not then. I didn't. I wanted a son. Elizabeth knew that. I wanted a boy that I could mold and form to grow up to be a man to take my place. I suppose that's the real reason why I wanted Elizabeth to bring you home. Even though she didn't want to? <laughs> no, I didn't think about that. I only wanted her to do what I thought she should do. Eh, uh, that makes me an old fool. I'm stuck with it. Too old a fool to change. Yeah, I guess you are. Something else the contract to talk to you, I suppose? That's right. Something's too heavy to lift, you find a way to pull it. That's what I meant when I, I asked for a block and tackle. Yeah, which we didn't have. And we had to wait till those horses weren't too wild to work before we could do this. Now, what we gotta do is get your shoulders up here near the end and tie in with whatever we got left of your shirt. Then we gotta put your bad leg up on that branch over there and tie it in there, see? so the branches can kind of act like a spring pad, you know what I mean? You're an ingenious young man. Cadet material, right now. A little more training, and you're third mate. And you'll be on your way to your master's ticket. Any tonnage, any ocean. Yeah, well, right now it's on the way to the road in the Ponderosa. And I'm gonna need all the help you can give me, all right? <laughs> okay, here we go. That's everything. Thank you. But that's not quite everything. I'm a blunt man, Mr. Cartwright. I usually say what I have to say without any fuss, but this time it's not so easy. Jamie likes it here. The Ponderosa is his home. He's made that quite plain to me. I hate to admit it, but Jamie belongs here. Well, we, uh, we feel that way, too. Thank you. That's settled then. I, I, I'll tell Judge Taylor. <clears throat> I still want him to see uh, Boston, the house where his mother was born, and the Callahan ships. Oh, I'm sure he'd like to visit you very much. 
You bring him here, Mr. Cartwright. There's things I'd like to show you, too. It'd be my great pleasure. Well, I'll, I'll be down in a minute. say thank you. Yeah, you did. But your idea or Ben Cartwright's? Mine, sir. Well, I've said it, and I'm not going to change your mind. You needn't worry about that. Well, I know that, sir. You did? How'd you know it? Well, uh, you yell a lot, but you're not as mean as you want people to think you are. I'm not, eh? No, sir. I still want you to see where the Callahans live. All right, I'll come and visit you. I look forward to it. You're a grandson to be proud of. By Jamie Cartwright. And that still sounds kind of strange. We'll both get used to it. Grant's prison. But we knew it would have to happen sometime. Place won't seem the same without the younger brothers. I know. I, I know. I just can't believe it. You seem like only yesterday you turned the key in the lock and you said, Welcome. Does seem like only yesterday, doesn't it? Well, you just have a way with you, Warden, of making 12 years fly by like a <sighs> blink of eye. <laughs> Here, here. It's awful kind of you to say that, Cole. Well, none of that. Goodbyes ain't easy, but uh, we just gonna make the best of it. I'm sorry. Besides, you don't look so good in front of the guard. I know. Good luck, Lonnie. I watched you grow up here. I'm a still growing. Almost like a son to me. Take good care of yourself, huh? Bart. Warden. Bart. Warden. I don't know how I'm going to replace you in the garden, Bart. Whenever I bite into an onion, I'll think of you. Every time I smell one, I'll think of you, Warden. Great feeling to know you rehabilitated three of the toughest the West has ever known. Well, life goes on. Back to work, Clark. Almost time for dinner call. Must have lost my watch. My wallet's gone, too. But I know where they're at. Where? With your gun. Get the men together! Hear me, Lonnie? 
Did you hear me, Lonnie? Huh? Huh? Oh. Falling asleep again? Oh, yeah. What oh, scared the heck out of me when you woke me up? I thought I died. Well, you will be dead if you don't pay attention. Now we head for the shack come nightfall. Not over here. Let's head back and try the creek. Shh. They're coming back. If any of you men spot them, shoot to kill. The only place for the younger brothers is six feet under. Lonnie! Sorry, Cole. Boys, <laughs> we're here. <laughs> Money, keep an eye peeled at the window. Right. Bart, yeah. find something to pry up the floorboard. You bet. Money, how does it look? Pretty dark. Well, I know that it's dark, but do you see anything out? How come you got that eye closed? Uh, just resting it. Resting it? Yeah. You see, I figured it's gonna be a long night, so I gave my right eye the first watch, and now, from now, my left eye will relieve it. Relieve it? It grieves me to think we had the same daddy. Here, here, this ought to do it. Oh, that's fine. Now, uh, which board did you hide the guns under? Which what? board? Well, what are you, an echo? I said which board. Now just calm yourself down and give me a minute. It has been 12 years. It's gone on 13 years. Which board? That one right there. That's more like See, I told you, just give me a minute. Give me a hand and pry it up. Cole, would you help me pull up this board? I just know this is the one that's it. Well, the odds are getting better all the time. All right. All right. Sit hold. One, one, two, two three. three. Here, lean on me now. Come on now. Can you make it? Yeah, over here. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's better. Was it under there? Uh-uh. I'm sure I know where I hid them guns if you just give me a minute. Oh, you said that last night. You don't remember bird brains. Well, so don't, don't, don't give me any more of your bunk. That's it! What is it? The bunk! I told you I could find them if you'd just give me a minute.
time. Too long. What are we going to do now? We ain't going to shoot anybody, that's for sure. Wait a minute. Wait a cotton-picking minute. What are we acting so down in the mouth for? We never shot nobody before, did we? Well, did we? No, but in, in the old days, everybody was so scared, everybody was just afraid to do anything. Right. Yeah. Uh, people probably even forget to be as scared. Wrong. If they're scared of the younger brothers once, they can be scared of us again. All we've got to do is build our reputation again. Well, just how do we go about that without getting ourselves killed? We start small. You remember the little bank over in Silver Hill? Oh, yeah. That's what we're going to hit first. It's Silver Hill, all right. I might have been mistaken, but I think it was a lot more crowded the last time we passed this way, Cole. No, never mind. We said we was going to start small, didn't we? Yeah. Another. This is it. Cover me. Well, you can stop covering me now and give me a hand. My foot is caught. Uh, hold on a minute. Be careful. Don't twist my ankle. Oh, be careful. Oh, 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 don't. Oh. There you go. Oh. Oh. Check the safe while I put on my boots. The first thing I'm going to do if we ever make a good haul is get me a new set of boots. Beautiful boots. A fine song. Oh, me. Oh. Hey, look. That's Cole. Hey, Cole, you okay? It's all right as could be expected after being blown halfway across the street. Well, we're sorry about that, Cole, but we got the mail back. Well, we got to get out of here while the getting's good. That explosion will bring half the town. Let's move. Yeah, Cole. Cool. Oh, Cole, this is a sad one. Listen, my dearest Herbert, I feel as though you've been gone forever. Even though it has been a few days, my tears are turning. Oh, shut up. I don't care about Herbert. But it is sad. I'll tell you what is sad. The younger brothers pull a first job in 12 years and wind up with a handful of letters. Now, that is sad. Well, now. Cole, I, I don't think nobody's seen this when we was in Silver Hill. Well, let's hope not. All right. There's no use crying over spilt milk. All we got to do is find us another bank, a bigger bank, one that's just, well, chock full of money. We need us good horses and, well, I need me some boots, too, because these Dear kids. Mr. Cartwright. Oh, shut up with those dumb letters. Wait a minute, Cole. This one ain't so dumb. L listen, dear Mr. Cartwright, I'm sure by now you have received my bank draft for the $15,000. Now, I will be needing more horses in the near future, and I hope I can do business again with you, yours truly, James Parker. Let me see. Yeah, whatever bank this Cartwright fella has his money in must be chock full. And look, they got horses to boot. Which envelope could come out? Wait a minute. Oh, here it is. Mr. Horse. Cartwright, Virginia City, Nevada. Well, take a look at that man. Yeah. We'll take the road through Barton and then head south. All right, now you head due north till you pass Barton. 
Then you take Stoner Pass and due east to Glover's place. Got it. Shouldn't take you more than oh, three, four days round the trip. Right. I got those supplies you wanted loaded in the wagon. Oh, I got good. enough there for a party of 12. Oh, good. You won't take any chances, little brother. Well, you're all set then. Big opportunity for this horse. I know you'll handle it well. Don't worry about a thing, Paul. Sorry you have to carry all that cash with you, but old man Glover just won't deal any other way. Well, like I told you, Paul, don't you worry about a thing. A whole gang of outlaws couldn't take that money away from me. like it's been run through a meat grinder. I'm hungry, Cole. We ain't never gonna make it to that Virginia city unless we get some money for some food and horses. What's that racket? Right I don't know. Well, go check and find out. No, Lonnie, that little pinky is the one that's killing me. It's a stage! What? A stage! A stage. Well, uh, diggity dog, we've got something to rob. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, give me, give me, give me that rope. No, uh, uh, tie it to the end of a tree. Uh, Lonnie, Lonnie, you run across to the other side of the road. As soon as the stage gets close, you pull up and make the stage stop. Right. Uh, and Lonnie, Lonnie, stop. And then wait and cover us, huh? You betcha, Cole. Lonnie! Yeah, Take the end of the rope with you. them sacks. It's just mail headed for Virginia City. You ain't fooling nobody. Throw down them sacks! All right. All right, hold it. You two make a move, I'll fill you so full of holes they'll never find your belly button. Do you really think that the younger brothers are so dumb they put away their guns and not have you covered? Lonnie, fire a little shot for the gentleman. We'll fire it now, Lonnie. Lonnie! Bluff ain't go to work, younger. Put your hands upside the stagecoach. All right, Jake, tie him up. I thought we'd seen the last of you boys in these parts. But I guess some folks just never learn. We'll have to deliver you with the mail. Oh, oh. I'll be dead fur. A hold up. Get up. Get up. More up. Let's get out of here! Oh, oh, oh! Hey, looks like I got here just in time. Well, you certainly did. Did either one of them robbers hurt you fellas? No, no, uh, thanks to you, uh, Mr. Uh... Cartwright, horse Cartwright. Cart... 
You own a ranch named the Ponderosa? No, that's that's my paw. He owns it. Well, what do you know? Uh, my name is uh, Sawyer, and this is my guard, uh, Mr. Uh, Finn. Well, I'm happy to meet you, gentlemen. Let me help you with them bags. Uh, no, 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 no. There's no need. I no. got nothing better to do. I got plenty of time. I'm just going into Barton to get a bath, a good night's sleep. There you are. We don't know how to thank you. Don't even try. The citizen's duty to see to it the mail gets through, gentlemen. That's true, if anything ever was. <laughs> yep. Well, have a good journey, fellas. The same to you. Yeah. Well, sure is a small world, ain't it? <laughs> Bart, hmm. go find that stupid brother of ours. All right. He's probably asleep under a tree. Come to the right place. Only stable in town. Cost you 20 cents a piece to bet them down and 30 cents for feed. Fine. Uh, just keep the extra 50 cents and make sure they got plenty of grain. Oh, it ain't worth an extra 50 cents. Only feed a horse what he needs anyway. Well, just keep it anyhow, huh? I was aiming to. Howdy, Sheriff. Hey, got him! Those were the days. What can I do for you, stranger? I was wondering if I could find a place around here where I could get a bath. Well, you could use one. Right around the corner, Barton's bed and bath, best in Barton. Much obliged. Yes, nothing the bank. We robbed the stage, and all we got to show for it is a bunch of dumb letters. I'm hungry. Oh, shut up! Stop reading those letters. Oh, I ain't hurt nothing, Cole. I've been in jail 12 years, and I never got me a letter. Now I've got a whole mess of them. But they ain't to you. Neither were the ones I didn't got. I think I'm gonna be sick. We gotta get us some money. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we sell a stagecoach? It's in good shape. Hey, here's another letter to that fellow, Mr. Cartwright. Dear Mr. Cartwright, I just wanted you to know the seed bulls have been rounded up. Seed bulls. There are not gonna be any disappointment, I promise you. Sorry about horse having to carry $10,000 in cash, but I'm an old man, and I can change my way. Oh, my best, Harvey Glover. $10,000. That fella that helped us rode off with $10,000. And we rode off with the dang mail. Oh, it's like you always say, Cole. No sense. Ah, oh, shut up! He said that he's gonna spend the night in Barton, right? Honey, honey, honey. Please. Nobody saw you. Why don't you ride into Barton and find out where this cart ride is staying? Then we'll all go in and pay him a visit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you boys ain't so slow to grasp. 
I'm dreaming of Jeannie with the light brown hair. La, 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 la. It's him, all right, Sheriff. I couldn't forget that face anywhere. He's one of the younger brothers. Sheriff, I've told you 15 times, if I've told you once, that my name is Hoss Cartwright, not Younger. And for the 16th time, Younger, we got two eyewitnesses who have testified they seen you a riding and a shooting and helping them brothers of yours rob the U.S. mail. And I've told you that that was a mistake. I should hope to shout it was, and you made it. Look, Sheriff, if you just send somebody to Virginia City, they'll tell you who I am. Look, younger, two eyewitnesses is good enough for me. I ain't gonna waste the taxpayer's money sending no deputy to check on that phony story of yours. Then you ain't gonna do nothing. I'm gonna give you a little piece of advice. Plead guilty and throw yourself on the mercy of the court. Thanks a lot, Sheriff. I don't know what I'd do without you. Think nothing of it. Yes, sir. Can I help you? Yeah. Uh, you, you got any good beds? Barton Bed and Bath's got the best beds in Barton. Oh. Oh. Sign right here. Business is kind of slow. He only got but one customer. Ain't even got him. He's in jail. His name ain't Cartwright, neither. It's Younger. He's one of them Younger brothers. Yeah, here's your key. Hmm. No, no one. A uh, younger. They think that sod busters are younger. Well, he looks about as much like a gunfighter as. Never mind. He's got to break into that jail. That'll be a new one for us. We spend 12 years trying to figure out a way to break out of jail. We've been out a week, and now we've got to figure a way to break back into one. Broad daylight. Yeah, in the top, too. I mean, that's when we're going to do it. Broad daylight. They won't be expecting us, Sam. We'll just come in as big as you please. Come on. Let's ride! Stop reading those damn letters! I'll cover you. Make it quick and quiet. Who was it? Who am I? Telegram. I'm a telegram. trouble like it is already. Listen, you wouldn't stand a chance here with the trial. If you stay here in town, they're gonna hang you. If you don't go down, I'm gonna shoot you. Them's my choices. Uh -huh. I'll go. Where's the money? What money? The 
$10,000 had on you. Now, don't you lie to me. I read your mail. The sheriff's got it. Where? It's in the money belt. Well, where's the money belt? It's on the sheriff. Oh, the keys. Cole's gonna skin me alive. <laughs> Oh, come on, hurry up. We gotta get out of here. No. Well, what do you want me now? I ain't got no money. We'll figure out something. Give me the key. For what? For the lock. You put that lock on the door? Well, of course I put the lock on the door. You told me to lock it. When I said lock it, I didn't mean lock it. I meant bolt it. Well, if you meant to say bolt it instead of lock it, why didn't you say bolt it? How are we gonna get out of here? Always prepared. Excuse me, friend. I, I didn't see you. <laughs> Darker on the mustache, heavier, you know what I mean? And the hat, even higher on a big one. I know it's hard to believe, but it's the biggest hat I ever seen. Now you're getting it. That's it. What do you think? That's it. Uh huh. Get this over to the printing office. I want them posters in every town for 200 miles. Kind of a big reward, ain't it, Sheriff? It'll be worth it to be the sheriff responsible for capturing the most vicious gang the West has ever known. Only a question of time before they strike again. What price do you put on human life? You're right, Sheriff. Besides, it was there ten thousand dollars anyway. Ain't you feeling any better, Cole? No, I ain't feeling any better. Well, I wish there's something we could do. You've done enough already, both of you. I'm hungry. Why don't you go out and blow up a rat? I told you it was a mistake. It wasn't your mistake, Lonnie. Moss and Moss. 35 years ago. Thanks for not blaming me, Cole. I got nothing. Hey, uh, fellas, these, these ropes sure are tight. A couple more days without anything to eat, they'll loosen up a bit. Oh, I wish you wouldn't talk about food. I wish you wouldn't talk at all. I'm thinking. What you thinking, Cole? I ain't had enough quiet to find out. Shh. I've got it. Bonnie. Bart. I've got it. I've got how we're going to make some money. Well, how? Well, this here Cartwright had $10,000 on him, right? right? Right. And in that letter you read, somebody sent his paw $15,000, right? Right. right. Now, you want to see your pappy again, you tell me how to get that Ponderosa ranch of yours. Just having a long talk with Sheriff Coffee. Oh, uh, but what? 
Uh, this. The younger brothers, they're still at it. <laughs> I thought they were. Hoss? Uh, yeah, that's him, all right. Uh, Sheriff Coffey said the reward's being offered by the sheriff and Barton. What for? Oh, nothing serious. Uh, stage robbery, assaulting an officer, blowing up a jail. Let's ride. Howdy. I, I'm looking for Mr. Ben Cartwright. That's me. Well, I'm in luck. A and so are you. I bring uh, regards from that wonderful boy of yours. I hate to take money like this. It seems uh, almost dishonest, but... The younger brothers have had a run of such rotten bad luck. Look, you promise that Hoss will be returned safely. I always say if you can't trust the word of Cole Younger, whose word can you trust? I always say it, but they always mean it. Your son cut me to the quick. Look, I promise to get Hoss back here as soon as I get back with the money, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. All right. We trust you. Well, I'll be on my way. You certainly have a lovely place here. It's an inspiration. Makes a man wonder if uh, honesty ain't the best policy. But it's so hard to change late in life. Goodbye. Think we ought to follow him? No. No, I'll tell you what we can do, though. We can ride to Barton and get this mix-up straightened out with the sheriff. We'll settle up, huh? Hoss Younger. <laughs> Hand over those saddlebags. I don't suppose it's doing good to tell you there's nothing in these bags but a bunch of old letters. It'll take more than that to fool the James boys. Now hand over them bags. Thanks, old timer. That's right, Jesse. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. What is this world coming to? Sheriff, I, uh... I just wrote... This is important, Sheriff. I'm almost finished. It has to do with this wanted poster. You got information about these men? I sure do. That's my son. Is that a fact? That's a fact. Well, that's not a fact. Here's to. You said so yourself. No, I, what I said was that he was my son. If but he's your son, and is he younger? Then that makes you a younger. It don't take no genius to figure that out. Now, look, I told you, my name is Cartwright. And so is his. Now, all you have to do is to wire Virginia if City. He, and if he ain't younger, then how come them other kin of yours come in here and busted them out? I tried to explain that to you, Sheriff. They came in here to get the money. $10,000. And how come they didn't take it? I don't know. They, they made a mistake. They made a mistake? Yes. Younger brother's the most notorious gang of robbers in the old West. Come in here to steal ten thousand dollars, and then they just plumb forget to take it. What do you take me for, young? Oh, would you stop calling me that? I told you my name is Cartwright. Oh, you're just two peas in a pod, the both of you. He tried to pull that phony name business on me too. I want to tell you something, younger. I've been sheriff a long time, and I know the look. What look? The look of a criminal. That big young in of yours has got it, and you have got it, too. Sheriff, this is ridiculous. I tell you what's ridiculous. You rant and then rave, and that's what's ridiculous, because ain't going to do you no good. The judge will decide when he rides through here next month what to do with you. Next month? Next month. I'm hungry.
thinking, Cole? Yeah. Me too. What are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? Ask you first. I'm thinking and I'm worried about what you're thinking. Well, I've done my best. I know you have, Cole. We ain't blaming you nothing. It's just that nothing seems to be working itself out. No. But I've got it. I've got money. Yeah. Bart, what have we done wrong so far? Everything. I'm, I mean, what laws have we broke? We ain't hurt nobody, and we still got those letters that we stole. Yeah, well, what about the money you took from his paw? I can't do nothing about that. I was robbed. What are you getting at? Just this. All we wanted when we got out of jail was a little steak so we could settle down, right? Right. Well, there's only one thing we can do. Turn ourselves in. They'll send us back to prison. I bet we'd only get one or two years, and when we got out, we'd have our steak. What stake are you talking about? The reward, the $10,000 reward. Don't you see, if we turn ourselves in, that'd be just catching yourself, huh? Well, I suppose so. Sure it is, Lonnie. I'd go in for life if they give me something to eat cold. Wake him up. Younger Brothers is headed for town. Coming. Sheriff, they're coming. Simmer down. Who's coming? The Younger Brothers, the whole gang of them. So, them kin of yours is on the way to bust you out. Well, we'll be ready for them this time. I'll deputize every man in this town. You can't. Why can't I? There ain't no man left. Everybody left town when they heard the Youngers was coming. Then it's just you and me. I deputize you. Raise your right hand. Sheriff, don't be a fool. Let us out of here. No. In years to come, younger, this day will be wrote up in the pages of this magazine. And the Sheriff of Barton will be remembered as a man that died with his boots on. Up. That's an old trick, Cole. It won't work. Trick? Why well, won't well, well, trick you? So you can bust out Ben and Joe Younger. Never heard of no Ben and Joe Younger. We come give ourselves up. I told you. Shut up, Younger. Cole, if you want in here, you're gonna have to blast your way in. Well, I wish you'd change your mind. That's my final word. You've heard him, Lonnie. It's hard to believe what a man has to do to get himself arrested. Sheriff, for the last time, you're making a mistake. Maybe so, Younger. But it'll be my last one.
Lonnie, can't you do nothing right? It grieves me so much to think that we're kin. We just want to give ourselves up. Hi, Paul. I told you I'd get him back safe and sound. All right, let's go. I still think we're entitled to that reward, Mike. You talking about my $10,000? Well, it don't seem right if you put it that way. Hoss, you think you could manage to get this to Mr. Glover without any problems this time? Yes, sir. How much obliged to you, Hoss, for dropping them three off at Grant Prison for me? My pleasure, Sheriff. Let's go. Well, I'm sorry about the mix-up, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, that's all right, Sheriff. I, uh, I figure you were doing your best. Now, Mr. Cartwright, uh, I'm about to write up the report on how I captured the younger brothers. And I was just wondering if anybody was to talk to you. Uh, um, Sheriff, you can rest assured. Whatever you say happened is the way it was. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Hard to believe. They sure did have that look. Whoa! Throw down the saddlebags, Sonny. I don't reckon you'd believe that there ain't nothing in them bags but mail, would you? No, I wouldn't. Throw them down and get them passengers out here. Well, they ain't got no money, and besides, they just... Is that you, Cole? Daddy. Now then, it has been moved and seconded that the Virginia City Merchants Association sponsor a baby contest, huh? <laughs> I say, let's have a turkey shoot. No good. We'd have to hold it outside of town. Wouldn't help business at all. Mm. And it adds a rowdy element. Mm. Now, I say we should have an oratory contest. It's got class. It's got mm. tone. Oh, we did and that in 66. Put the whole town to sleep. How about a pie-eating contest? Now... Fierce overhead, all them pies. Now, I don't see the slightest objection to us having a baby contest. Hmm? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, according to Lon here, the one they had over in Grover's Creek, just did absolute wonders for business. Oh, there was some kind of problem they had, but I don't recall it. Well, we'd have to explore all the possibilities, Bert. Oh, we, we, we could have a horse race. Outside of town. Wouldn't help business. Rowdy element. Call the question. Come on, I got customers waiting. Now then, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion is carried. Now, the first thing we got to do is to get some judges. Well, we could probably get Jim Pender. Nine kids of us all. That ought to make him some kind of an expert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rufus, I am appointing you to the committee for lining up the judges. I got to get back to the shop. Yeah, good, good, good. Try and get an extra one, will you? Now, bachelors are preferred. Oh. I can probably get Charlie Spears. Oh, that'd be fine. That'd be fine. That'd be just fine. Well, now I'm ready to entertain a motion for adjournment. We, uh, uh... Well, meeting is adjourned. Hey, Haas. Haas, hold up a minute. Oh, hi, Rufus. Haas, oh. open to meet up with you. We just, yeah? we just had a meeting in them. That's fine. We're going to have a baby contest. Oh, that's good. How'd you like to be a judge? Me? Oh, that's sort of out of my line. Oh, Rufus. there's nothing to it. Yeah? 
You come into town a week from Saturday, stroll along and look at the babies, vote for whichever one suits your fancy, acknowledge the applause and so forth, and it's a real service to the community. Well... Well, I'll see you later, Lon. Oh, Bert. Hmm? I just remembered what that problem was over in Grover's Creek. The judges had an awful time. Really? Awful, like... There was all kinds of pressure, bribery, threats. Oh, feelings were running pretty high, huh? Oh, one judge was took down with a nervous affliction, and I believe there was some talk of actual bloodshed. Well, that's just what we want, Lon. We want to get folks' interest. You know, it seems to me that we might have ourselves a real Jim Dandy of a fundraiser, eh? <laughs> Never guess what happened to me today. Not in a million years. You're going to judge a baby contest. How'd you know that? Hop Singh told us. <laughs> How'd he know it? They, they just voted on it, and I rode straight here without telling us all. How'd he know that? He read it in a cookie. How'd you know that? A word travel fast. Come, come. <laughs> Mr. Horse Cartwright, I'd like you to meet my cousin, Ah Ping. How are you, ma'am? Happy to meet you. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, she first a cousin, Lim Toy. Uh, this, Ah Ping. Oh. Second cousin. How do you do? Oh, I'm fine. Happy to meet them. Uh, Mr. Horse, you take close a look. Put out finger. Let him play with it. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps the most beautiful baby in all Virginia City. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm saying, I think you're trying to influence me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, just help make up mine. Face fat, our ping, most uh, beautiful. That's shameful. No offense to you, ma'am. I'm happy to meet you and see your lovely baby, but Hop Singh, I will not be influenced. I'll make up my mind the day of the contest. Until then, I'll remain completely impartial. Cha 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 cha. Don't worry, I fix. I show him. I show. Can you imagine that? He tried to sway me. Well, I'm afraid you're going to come across a lot of that. Uh, I don't know why. That was the same reason I'm saying try to get to you. Ah, oh, this whole thing's just for fun. It's just a jolly occasion. I can't really see anybody getting serious about the whole thing. <laughs> Yes, of course. What about you? Oh, I really don't know, Sissy. The whole thing seems such a bother, so artificial. I understand exactly how you feel. Little Sally does favor her father. I do hope you enter the contest, though. It's the spirit that counts. Nice to see you, dear. My, yes! Hello, Clara. You know that gorgeous powder blue organdy? Oh, yes, I'm gonna get some. She bought every scrap. Six and a half yards. Why, that's the loveliest material in town. And you only need a yard for a baby dress. Why, that witch. Precisely. Well, uh, I guess I'm just going to have to see what I can do with that eggshell wire. Uh, uh, Edith, dear, I'm afraid I got that. Hello, Rosanne. I suppose you're entering Michael. Oh, yes, of course. And you're entering the uh, Johnny. Oh, Sissy, I don't know what to do. Are you going to much trouble, I mean, to dress him up and all that? Oh, my, no. No bother at all. Just his regular clothes. After all, Rosanne, it isn't baby contest, not a dress contest. Oh, you're so right. Sissy, that is a load off my mind. Yes, I think I can let him down about an inch. But this is the last time. There isn't any more material. That'll be fine. Uh, can I have a change now, ma'am? Thank you. How long do you reckon it'll be? Well, I'm pretty swamped with baby dresses right now. Uh, yeah. Day after tomorrow? That'll be fine. Well, good morning, Mrs. Porter. Hello, Elaine. 
Horse cart ride. Howdy, Miss Porter. Oh, horse, now my friends call me sissy. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, handsome as ever, isn't he, Elaine? <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> I understand you're going to judge the contest. Uh, well, that that's true. Me and Jim Pender and Charlie Spears. Oh, of course. <laughs> but I don't doubt that you'll be the backbone, the mainstay of the judging. I'd like your opinion as to... Uh, Miss Porter, I gotta tell you what I've told the other ladies. I can't look at that baby. I can't even discuss that contest. I gotta keep myself plumb impartial. Admirable. Yeah. Totally admirable. Yeah. Hello, Jamie. Oh, hello, man. I hear the pants. Yeah. Come on, Jamie, let's go. Oh. Good day, ladies. Good day. Bye-bye. Would you excuse me a moment? Mm -hmm. Man. Hey. He wouldn't even look at Michael. He insisted I put Jennifer in the other room while he was here. You're entering the child? I suppose, yes. I never was too clear on the relationship. I'm a guardian. I want to a dress for Michael. Your prettiest pattern out of that material. With a little white collar and edge it with this lace, down the front and on the wrists. What are the other women having made? Nothing quite like this. Edith Medcalf and Roseanne Tate? No, not this elaborate. Good. A pretty frame helps a pretty picture. I want Michael to have the finest clothes in the contest. I think he will. <laughs> that includes Jennifer. I don't expect my dressmaker's child to show up in something finer than I'm paying for. Is that clear, Miss Summers? Yes. I intend to win. Now, show me some patterns. going to influence my decision, is it? Certainly not. But there is information that you ought to be officially aware of if you're going to do your job properly. I reckon that's all right. This is strictly confidential. Yeah. My simple duty? Passing on malicious gossip like that? Then why does Edith Weston always keep her child covered from head to toe? I ain't gonna listen to more of that. Can you walk all right? Oh, yeah, yeah, I can manage. Jim, uh, who's that? Oh, oh, thank you, thank you. Oh. You got it all straight now. How to vote. Oh, yes, yeah, yes, indeed, uh-huh. We don't like doing this, Jim, but, you know, we had to do it on kind of rose in. Uh-huh. All right, listen, you don't have to tell me anything about women. <laughs> no hard feelings. Oh, oh, no, 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 listen. No, no, okay. no. <laughs> Hi. Jamie's trousers are ready. Oh, yeah. oh, good. That, Bernard, can you fix this for me before the contest, Elaine? Expect? You sound mad as a hornet. Well, I am dead burn women anyhow. You're quite right. Huh? Women. Are you 
sure you'd like to kiss me? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Hey, what's the matter? You're not very interested. I'm sure I am. You don't sound like it. Well, I am. How much? Oh, uh, quite a bit. A whole lot. All right. What's wrong? He didn't say when you'd do it. This afternoon? Promise? Cross my heart. much like you. Well, that's natural, my sister's baby. Oh, of course, your sister's child. I hope it's short enough. I want his cute little feet to show. She's dead? Mm-hmm, in childbirth. I'm sure I told you about it, Mrs. Porter, when I brought Jennifer back. From Sacramento? Mm-hmm. What about the father? Strikes me he should be taking care of his own child. He's a drunkard. She's better off with me. When you make the bonnet, cut it so that it frames his face and doesn't cover it. So everyone can see what a beautiful child he is. All right. What was your sister's married name? Bayfield. Hmm. It's really very nice. I have relatives in Sacramento, you know. Oh. I'll pick the dress up with the bonnet. <laughs> I want to send a telegram to Sacramento. Bert, I thought we had this deal all worked out. Uh, yes, but in looking over the contract, there were one or two little points. Well, let's get them cleared up. Uh, you know my son, Bert Jr., don't you? Oh, yes. Yeah. But I don't think you have ever seen my new little granddaughter, Millicent. Well, what's this got to do with the contract? Uh, nothing. And on the other hand, everything. Ben, I don't quite know how to go about this. Well, let me help you. My son, Hoss, is judging a baby contest. Well, then let's get down to cases. Ooh, oh. Don't look like there's been no woman-type females around. Uh oh, just a minute. I'll go check inside. Yeah, good idea. Get this stuff unloaded. Well, here, I can take care of the supplies, Hoss. Huh? No trouble. Yeah? Yeah. If I can do any other chores you'd like me to handle also, I and mean, swamp out the stable, chop some firewood, anything at all. You, uh, you feeling all right? Yeah, just fine. Yeah? You know, all the way back from town, you didn't open your mouth. Didn't I? No. If you ain't sick, you got something on your mind. What is it? Well, you know that girl in town, Kathy. Yeah. Yeah, well, you see, she's got this brother. Is he giving you trouble? Oh, no, no, that, that's her other brother. I, I'm talking about her little brother. Oh. How little? 
He's a baby. Ah. Uh, yeah, but and he's, he's real... pretty, and he's beautiful, and he's sweet, and he's nice, and all them things, right? Yeah, how'd you know? Yeah, because every baby in town is all of a sudden. That's how it comes. I don't know what kind of female wild she's pulling on you. But... Real nice. Well, you just tell her it didn't take, you hear? I ain't gonna be influenced, got to, or taken by nobody under no circumstances. You understand that? Yeah, Stop. I can sit... I don't want to hear no more about it, Jamie. That's it. But, Hans... Honestly... No, I don't go here. Oh, you can't believe what's going on in town with the folks about that baby contest. Oh, I think I could, oh. Hoss. Bert Rubush put the pressure on me to persuade you to vote for his grandchild. Is that a fact? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I wish there was something I could do about it, Paul, but I can't. Well, there's no need. I just told him I didn't do business that way. Yeah, good. It's just hard to believe that human beings can act like that. You'd be surprised. Well, you can't imagine what some of them women are, are telling me about other women's babies. It's just terrible. It's awful. Hoss, maybe it'd be an idea for you to just withdraw. No, that wouldn't be no good. They'd just get somebody else, and he'd probably be, be influenceable. Hey, Tessie's got that brood mare out back. Oh, yeah? How does she look? Well, I think you ought to take a look at her. Well, I'll do that just before supper. Dad, burn it anyhow. What's the matter, brother? You got trouble? Yeah. Hey, Joe, I ask you, what do folks take me for anyhow? Well, that's hard to say. Why, you'd, you'd think that they figured I had no more backbone than a willow branch in a windstorm. Oh, a baby contest, huh? Yeah, I've been cussed, coaxed, begged, barred, lied, zoo, stole, as if any of that kind of treatment made me make up my mind before the contest. <laughs> Oh, you got too much character for that. Yeah. I'm glad you see that. That's one of the things that's always made me proud to have you as a brother. Integrity. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. It's the backbone of a man, integrity. Yeah. Got a hundred dollar prize in that contest, huh? Yeah. It's a lot of money, huh? Sure is. <clears throat> nice if uh, somebody really needed it, won it. You, uh, got somebody in particular in mind? No. I'm just making a statement to be nice if whoever won it was somebody that needed it. Oh. Good. I guess I'm just getting a little gun shy. That's all, Joe. Sorry. Of course, there is the widow Cumberland. <laughs> I, mean, uh -huh. I knew it. Look, I just said a name. I didn't mean anything. Well, I can think of at least man-deserving people, like, like Elaine Summers, for example. All right, all right, forget it. I didn't mean anything by it. Supper lady. Supper lady, gentlemen. Well, touchy. Good. After that mutton hash last night, I need a decent meal. Yeah, that Tommy Cameron happens to be a cute kid. Oh, will you get off of that? Okay. Meal looks pretty good. Hash. Mutton hash again, Paul. I kind of like it. Well, I hate it. I know. You like pig steak, hash brown potato, hot apple pie with curry? That's right. Can have when you vote for our ping. Otherwise, mutton hash. Well, I ain't a eating mutton hash. I ain't gonna be influenced at no cost. Well, I better be heading on home. Same here. Supper's probably burned with frazzle. <laughs> You're lucky. All I got to look forward to is hard words and cold mush. I'm gonna have another drink. Same here. Hello, boss. Howdy. What's the matter with all these fellas, anyhow? Oh, a variety of things, but most of them, their home life's all tore up because of this baby contest. Isn't that too bad? Bring me a big T-bone, some potatoes, and a big slab of apple pie, huh? Sure, it's great for business. Say, Hoss, I hear the baby contest's a boat race. What's that supposed to mean? Well, the word's out, you've been fixed. Where'd you hear a thing like that? Well, it's common talk in the Chinese community. Well, it's a lie. Straight goods? You know me better than that. Thanks. Gents, I'll cover all bets on the baby contest. 
How can you set odds with a thing like that? Well, it's like a maiden horse race where you look at the sire and the dam. <laughs> Only in this case, you consider the parents. Oh. Sounds reasonable. <laughs> Not to me, it don't. I've never seen this town so worked up about anything. You think this is bad? You just wait till it's all over. We're gonna have one winner. We're gonna have a whole bunch of weeping women. But it has been very good for business. I hate to tell you how bad it has been for my marriage. The whole town's accusing us of cheating, having our own kids entered in the contest. Yeah, yeah. The sponsors, we just should have had better sense. Oh, well, next time we'll know better. As far as I'm concerned, there ain't gonna be no next time. Wouldn't have helped none. Our women folk would have talked us into it anyway. Kind of reminds me of a story I learned once in school. I don't remember no story about no baby contest in school. Oh, no, this is about some Greek goddess, a nasty female who put up a golden apple for the most beautiful woman. Well, that caused so much trouble, it started the Punic War and the founding of Rome. Oh, no, 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 that, that was the Trojan War and the destruction of Troy. Oh, whatever, but the point is, it was the women done it. Yeah, well, it's the men that's putting the pressure on me at the moment. Yeah, and I bet behind every single one of them, there was some woman. That's right. But them that put up the golden apple is a bunch of greedy men. Well, we got to keep the economy moving somehow. It's just up to us men to keep the women under control. Why, Lon, as I recall, you're a bachelor. Now, some of these married men might find that a bit more difficult than you. Twenty-five to one for my kid? Mm-hmm. Those are awful long odds. I think they're fair, considering. I think you just assaulted my wife. Oh, no, no, no. She's a fine-looking lady. Then you insulted me. Yeah, I was just looking for a peaceful place to get a bite to eat. Well, how does a slab of roast, taters, and pie sound to you? What? That sounds mighty fine to me. Well, you just come right on in. We were just getting ready to dig in. Yeah? We'll fix you up. Sissy Porter, what is worth $10.75? A new baby bunting, some ribbon. Will you please come to bed? How can you sleep at a time like this? In the name of mercy, Edith, what do you want me to do? Oh, you nearly frightened me to death, well, huh? Serves you right, sneaking around here in the kitchen at this time of night. Well, I was just hungry. Well, if you'd eat your supper like you're supposed to, you wouldn't be running around here like a pack rat. I got an excuse. I, I ain't eat since dinner. Look, if you're gonna hang around, might as well give us some light. <laughs> you bet. What happened to you? Who ran into you? Uh, Tate Brothers. All three of them? Yeah. Well, I wish I'd have been there. Must have been a whopper. Well, nothing to it. Should have known better than trying to influence me like that. The baby contest again? Yeah. 
Seems like that's all that's on people's mind nowadays. And there ain't no end to what they'll go to to try to get my vote. Well, I guess you got an apology coming. Well, they apologize, all right. <laughs> no, not them. Me. For what? Well, you know, I tried to get you to vote for Kathy's little brother like that. Oh, you know, you ought not done that, Jamie. Yeah, I know. I'm awful sorry, Hoss. Well, I figure she must have put some kind of real pressure on you. She sure did. Still a mistake, though. Yes, sir. But nothing to worry too much about. I mean, man's got to learn by his mistakes, ain't he? That's right. I mean, he ought to do what's right if he takes hide off his back. That's right, right. No matter how much pressure's put on him. Right. I mean, it's immoral for a man to, to put pressure on another man for his own selfish reasons. That's right. Of course, old Kathy's little brother is a cute little tag, ain't he? But that, you see, you're putting pressure on me. Wouldn't have made me vote for him. No, sir, I sure wouldn't have. Well, there's a bright side to everything, Jamie. You learned a good lesson, didn't you, boy? Yes, sir, I sure did. <laughs> good. You know, he is kind of cute, ain't he? <laughs> yeah. Then you think you might vote for him, Hollis? <laughs> Will you tell him, or shall I? You'll have to do your own dirty work, Mrs. Porter. Hello, Hoss. Howdy, Miss Porter. Lane, somebody said you wouldn't see me. Not really, Hoss. It was my suggestion. I sent a telegram to my uncle in Sacramento a few days ago. I got this answer back from him this morning. Somebody named Bayfield. What's this all about? Bayfield was her sister's name. Presumably. You recall Elaine left town rather suddenly a year ago? Yeah, when her sister had the baby. In Sacramento. Right. Then she came back six months ago with a baby girl. Well, yeah, her, her sister passed away. And... So Elaine claims. But my uncle tells me that there is no record of any marriage in Sacramento involving anyone by the name of Bayfield. Or a death. Or the birth of a child. <laughs> Well, somebody just made a mistake, that's all. Somebody did. Elaine. Little Jennifer is her child, born out of wedlock. What? I don't believe that. If I should tell that story to the first lady I meet, show her this telegram, all of Virginia City would know about it and believe it inside of an hour. Why would you want to do a thing like that? I mean, just spreading malicious gossip. There ain't no point. But there is. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Unless my son Michael wins first prize in the baby contest. Oh. This ain't my house, but I'm taking the liberty. Get out of here. You get out of here right now and don't you ever come back. Now go and get out of here. You can't mistake him. He'll be wearing a blue organdy dress. It's the only one in town. She'd have to leave Virginia City. At the very least. Boy, if this ain't that dad burned his carrion zone I ever heard tell of, she, she could ruin you and little Jennifer with that lie. It's not a lie, Hoss. I never had a sister. I never had a husband. But I do have Jennifer. Well, that's... That's all that really counts, then, Ed. To me, it is. I thought I had it all worked out so that she'd have a decent, proper life. Oh, it looks like the sins of the mother will be visited upon her poor, innocent head. All because of a dad burn baby contest.
we got to call this whole thing off. No question about it. It has really gotten out of hand. Well, I wish we could, but we've done all this business. Our folks have spent their money. If we call this contest off at the last minute, it'll cause no end of trouble. Saw what happened in the saloon the other night. Everybody is all stirred up. Well, we should have took the ladies into account. They turned this whole thing into a regular alley cat fracas. I, I could quit. Yeah. Yeah, Hush, you could quit. That would leave it up to Charlie Spears. And he, he took the hide. And Jim Pender. He took to his bed. Neither one of them are exactly a pillar of strength, are they? Well, whatever your problem is, Hoss, you are the only one that can decide whether quitting will solve it. No, I reckon it wouldn't. Hop Singh! Happy pleasure to welcome you all here today on behalf of the uh, Virginia City Merchants Association. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, uh, uh, as you all know, we are gathered here today to select the most beautiful baby in all of Virginia City. Uh, and, and the first prize is $100. Uh, and this uh, rather charmingly uh, engraved, loving cop. Yes, now, uh, if um, all you ladies and parents will, will kindly place your babies in those uh, numbered baskets that we have lined up uh, across the room. Just place your babies in the baskets, and then uh, we'll uh, get started. <laughs> Uh, play, uh, please. <laughs> The one with the bull whip? Yeah. That's my cousin, Talker Anderson. He's gonna flog me. The Tate brothers are gonna beat me up, and Milo Stevens is gonna keep my cattle from water. That's a good problem. You boys ready? Yeah, we're ready as we're ever gonna be. Come on, boys, let's get it over with. Come on. Now, 
if you uh, ladies and parents will just step back, just step back from the baskets so the judges can have a good, clear look. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Something. Um, should we discuss or vote? Uh, let's vote. Uh, you first. Anderson. Tate. Pause. It's just no use, boys. It's got to be unanimous. Uh, let's go again. You first. Uh -huh. Stevens. Anderson. Now, uh, come on, Charlie. At least I showed that I was willing to change. But I ain't willing to get myself horsewhipped. You're both making me sick. You're just voting where the pressure's been put on you, that's all. Now, horse is right. Now, let, let's just put the pressures out of our mind all together. Now, let's just vote right. for the most beautiful baby. Right. right, right. Let the chips fall where they may. Very good. Uh, Tate. Now, there you go again. Well, maybe I really and truly think Rosie Ann Tate's baby is the most beautiful. About the same way I think talkers is. Wait a minute, wait a minute, boys. There's got to be a right honest and honorable way out of this somehow. Well, um, suppose that we eliminate everybody that's put pressure on us? It's worth a try. Let's go look at them. That eliminates over two. Uh, Grogan's kid. And the dressmaker's baby. Yeah, and there's a reason I can't vote for that baby. Uh, you, then there's a winner. We gave it to Grogan's kid. Uh, wait a minute. Let's go back out there and look one more time just to make sure, huh? Oh. Fanfare. And now, here are the judges with the verdict. Not yet, Bert. Not yet. We want to take one more look. Just one more, huh? Oh. You gotta start voting. I'm just looking for justice, boys, that's all. Justice? I'd settle not getting killed. What's holding you up? The crowd's getting awful restless. Well, we're working on it. Maybe we could uh, report like a like a hung jury. Hung? That, 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 that's very good. I'll tell you what we're gonna do, boys. We're gonna vote, and we're gonna vote honest. No, no, there ought to be a smarter way out of it than that. Things ain't that bad. Are they? They are. Uh, 
Now remember, he's got to be the most beautiful baby, and he's got to be honest. It's got to be unanimous, too. Very well, gentlemen. Let's go. And now, here's the verdict. We've reached a verdict, all right, but before I tell you what it is, I got a few things I want to say to you. First of all, I ain't never in all my years in Virginia City seen or heard so much backbiting and blackmailing and badmouthing that's took place the last few days over this, this baby contest. So help me, I can't see anybody out there that ought not to be plumb ashamed of themselves for some of the things they've done to win this contest. Let me tell you something. All kids are winners. All babies are beautiful. That is until their parents get a hold of them and start teaching them to cheat and lie and, and hurt their fellow humans, which is whatever one of you apparently is going to do from the way you've been acting here lately. If it's left up to me, I'd give a prize to every one of the babies, but I sure wouldn't give none to none of the parents. You're going to have an awful hard time, some of you, facing your neighbors the next few days. And you're even going to have a rougher time facing your young'uns when they grow up and find out what you've done to win this here trophy. Well, we've... We've done what you ask us to do. We've voted, and we've voted honest, and we've come to a decision. And we find the most beautiful baby to be Michael Porter. Uh, congratulations, sissy. Thank you, Bert. Uh, I am uh, so very grateful for the honor which has been done me of having my son, Michael, officially recognized as the most beautiful baby in Virginia City. This is the proudest and, and happiest moment of my life. Your part of the bargain. You really can't believe that we voted honestly, can you? I mean, you really don't believe that your baby is the prettiest. Well, of course he is. I know that. No, you don't. Not really. If you did, then you wouldn't have done all of this to see to it that he won the contest. That's sort of sad. I hope you keep this from Michael. If you ever found out about it, I'm afraid he'd think about as much of his mother as I do. Enjoy your trophy. Oh. Oh. You probably won't be needing this, but just in case. Thank you, Horace. For everything. Just a little matter of simple justice. I'll explain it over supper. Oh, good. Didn't take your mind off the mutton hash. Oh, no. He wouldn't. Well, Hop Singh has his own ideas about justice. Well, he would. You'll end 